Have you been wasting your time doing stretch partials in the gym? Let me tell you, if you've been doing them like this, or like this, then yes, you've been wasting your time. There's some great new evidence for stretch partials and the people who designed those studies know how to utilize them. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to use stretch partials to your advantage in order to build muscle, not waste your time with super lightweights. Hello, my name is Peter Truick and I'm a qualified and still practicing physiotherapist. My job is literally prescribe exercise based on evidence. So this falls right into my realm. This is my happy place. And guess what? We've been using stretch partials in clinical practice and it's working. In today's video, we're gonna be diving into two of the studies that found stretch partials more beneficial. And no, we're not just gonna look at the conclusions. We're gonna look at what they did in those studies, how they achieved more growth through stretch partials. And that's the part everyone else is missing out on. And then I'm gonna take you into the gym and go through some of my favorite stretch partials for exercises. Right, let's engage our scientist hats or coats and glasses in this case. So let's dive into the research. We're gonna pick two studies here. We're gonna look at one, how they got more growth on triceps, and two, how they got more growth in the quads, because let's be real, who doesn't want bigger legs? Right, so in the study where they look at tricep growth, they looked at, is the stretch advantageous? Fair enough. What did they do? They started off with a neutral position cable push down at 70% at of a one rep max. So in that position from 90 degrees, pushing down, so the end of range of movement, 90 degrees to extension. Now, when they went into the stretch range, you're thinking, right, we're gonna go into a full stretch. No, that's where the mistake comes in. That's where everyone's going wrong. This study showed that in 180 degrees of shoulder flexion and 90 degrees, only 90 degrees of tricep extension or flexion, 90 degrees is sort of mid-range. So 180 degrees flexion, 90 degrees flexion, they did not go past, they did not go into a deep stretch. They went 90 degrees to zero, 90 degrees to zero at 180 degrees of shoulder flexion. So where the success of stretches coming into the fitness world is blowing my brain, but that is how they achieved it with the triceps. And that's exactly how we're gonna achieve it, right? Let's just do what the research says. So the quads rarely emphasize my points on this. My point is that social media influencers are taking the exercises to an extreme stretch, having to sacrifice the weight due to sliding filament theory. I've said this in all my videos and people have commented saying, oh, you have to use stretch partials, they work. Yes, I love stretch partials. I don't like the way they're being taught. That, that, that is my whole pet peeve that that is why we're making this video. The quad research that showed the stretch or the initial portion of the range to be advantageous for hypertrophy with no benefits or no decrease in strength, looked at knee flexion from 100 degrees to 30 degrees. Your full range of movement at the knee is around 145 degrees to zero, or some people are hypermobile, so they can get to about plus 10 or plus 15. But let's look at a normal person. 135, uh, you can get 130 after a knee replacement. So 135 to zero, right? They worked at 100 degrees. If someone got 100 degrees of knee flexion off their knee replacement, I would be quite upset with myself, right? So we're looking at nowhere near a stretch. That's my point. We are not in a stretch position at all. There's no extra stretch tension on the quads. So in this position, they're working from 100 to mid range. So it's, it's a mid range movement. And that is where we are super, super strong. We are really strong mid-range. Sliding filament theory shows mid-range has the most overlapping myosin and actin fibers, therefore giving us the biggest muscle contraction, lifting the most weight. And that was shown to have better effects than from mid-range to 30 degrees. So we didn't even go into full lockout. So possibly if they'd gone to full lockout, they might have seen a different result. We don't know. That is, in my opinion, not the greatest methodology. So the way in which stretch partials have been shown to be advantageous is if they are able to use equal weight to your full range of movement and they're getting to be better than full range of movement for hypertrophy. Where can we boost that even more? In my opinion, let's look at ways in which we can do more weight by utilizing the stretch partial than we would have with full range. Because let's be real, more weight in the stretch partial, it just has to grow more, right? Not less weight in a super stretch where we're getting no benefits. And plus the, the cable the cable lateral raise is one of my pet peeves, right? Because you're just stretching right across. Your, your lateral deltoid isn't on much more of a stretch because we've had to come into slight internal rotation and adduction across. Yes, there might be a little bit more of a stretch, but you know what's in more stretch? 
all your cuff muscles on the back of the shoulder blade are in a lot more stretch than the delt. So guess what? They're going to be utilizing and helping out on the movement. So the difference between what the evidence base is saying and what the fitness influencers are recommending is that the fitness influencers are going with an excessive stretch equals more growth. What the research is saying is the stretch part of a normal range of movement, not even a stretch range of movement, is more beneficial. So why are we going super light in a super stretch to try build more muscle? It just doesn't make any sense. Anatomically, it doesn't work. Physiologically, it doesn't work. You are wasting your time. Let's head straight into the gym and I'll take you through some of my favorite ways to do stretch partials. So when we're looking at chest supportive rows, this is one of the prime times to be able to use stretch partials in terms of range of movement. The key is that we are technically stronger in the stretch position there than we are in the fully contracted position. And if we look at most rowing machines, this one's slightly different. Most of them are strength biased to that. So they lighter in this range, heavier in this range, where this one's slightly opposite, where I really like this. So the theory is here that if we're working in that stretch partial range of movement, we'll be able to lift more weight than if we were to go into fully contracted range, because this part is so difficult. So when your contracted range is heavier and harder, that's when stretch partials will have the most bang for their buck. So on a machine like this, use the chest supported rows. They are probably better for most back exercises, but lock it in and try and pull the weight back using the muscles in your back. No, you won't be able to isolate your lats as much as anyone says you can, but if we think about the lats in specifically, they are not as strong when your elbow passes your midline. They cannot contract and they're not in an anatomically advantageous position when the elbow is behind the body. They contracted in that position, but so are all the other muscles. So they work harder when the elbow is in front of the body. Right, so the lat pull down is a unique opportunity to use two variants of a stretch partial. The first one being locking the shoulder blades down, so therefore the lat's going to be doing most of the work. Now you can't isolate no matter what anyone says, but you can do your stretch partial there. Make sure your elbows aren't coming behind the body, because again, as I said, the lats don't squeeze as much there. But you can do your stretch partials there. And to be honest, even this just demonstrating, I'm feeling my lats lighting up. When you fatigue, let the shoulder blades elevate and utilize some of the lower traps, rhomboids, those sorts of muscles, the shoulder blade movers to help out and you'll get an insane pump and you can load the living hell out of it because again this range is easier than this range. This range down here is the hardest range for Jeff's Bayesian curl. The problem comes in when you go into extreme shoulder extension there's more of a stretch on the shoulder plus if you look at the hardest portion of the rep it's about there at 90 degrees. So, but to be fair, he has started doing this when he's doing the workout. He starts bringing it closer to his side so that we've got a huge amount of tension in the stretch position there and almost no tension there. So if you keep your arm there, reduce the full stretch, then you can actually work it quite nicely. However, don't be fooled. This is extremely difficult. Now, will that grow more muscle? then doing the stretch portion with a normal strength curve like a bicep where easiest part, hardest part, the answer is we don't really know. So chest movers can also be absolutely fantastic for doing stretch partials. Now, yes, the bench press does bias the stretch range anyway, so it's not gonna be as good a bang for your buck. However, if you have a plate loaded chest press machine, it can be really good. Not to say you can't do it for the bench, we'll show you on the Smith machine in a second, but if we think about the strength curve of this machine, this is pretty easy. You can see the relationship to gravity, the fulcrum on the arm, whereas if we up here, that is going to be 90 degrees to gravity, furthest distance from the pivot point. So this is going to be the hardest portion of the range, which means we can really load a machine like this up, lock your chest, set yourself nicely. I won't do my right hand because then you won't be able to see me. So pushing there, doing your stretch partials in that range there, absolutely fantastic. Um, you can really load this up, you can go two, three plates on something like this and do your stretch partials there. But just try and focus in on the chest contraction. You're not doing a tricep press, so you want to keep that nice and neutral. Feel the stretch on the chest as you go back and then squeeze it, even though you're only going in a half range of movement. Second option for the chest is to use a Smith machine. Now, the bench press or any normal chest pressing movement is going to be easiest and hardest in this range anyway 
then easiest up top. And that is just the biomechanics of the arm. We've got a wider point from the fulcrum of the shoulder. And there we're pretty much above the shoulder, so there's less pressure. So what we can utilize this is use the more difficult portion of the rep. You can load it up. Now, the reason I'm doing this on a Smith machine, if you do not have a spotter, do this on the Smith machine. If you've got a spotter, then happy days. You can do it on a bench press. But work in that range of movement. Don't just let it bounce off your chest. Control it or lightly tap the chest and pushing up. And again, focus on keeping those shoulder blades fully retracted. So right the way back, deep stretch on the chest. And then working in that small range of movement right there. I mean, I can feel my chest starting to pump up. Just doing it like that. One of my favorite ways to use stretch partials. Right, let's look at the cable lateral raise. I really do like the fact that Jeff's played with a strength curve and again, 90 degrees is now the hardest range. But we have to drop the weight significantly on this one, especially if you start looking at going into an extreme stretch position. The muscles that are working in that extreme stretch are probably not the ones you want to target. So if you stop at neutral and work out, that's absolutely fine try to avoid that extreme stretch. In that position, you've got a little bit of deltoid stretch, but if you feel them, they're not massively stretched. Not much difference to there. What is getting stretched are upper fibers of trapezius as the shoulder blade drops, levator scapulae. You're also getting supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor, both stretching. So if we stop there and just manipulate the strength curve, you can have a brilliant exercise for stretch partials. Another one of my favorite ways to use stretch partials is with the standing barbell bicep curl or any bicep curl. Decline or incline with the elbows behind you on a bench, absolutely fine. The principle stays the same. So with a bicep curl, your strength curve is a such where this is easy, this is hard, this is easy. So what that means is again, we can load it really heavy up to the mid range points and not have to worry about sacrificing stretch for weight. So if you load the bottom portion of the range, really heavy stop at the midpoint or stop even before you get to the midpoint and you're going to see epic results from stretch partials with an insane pump right so my favorite variation for tricep is either standing cable or dumbbell lying down skull crushers standing overhead extensions or skull crushers now they both apply exactly the same principle just the strength strength curve on the cable is harder in the stretch position where this is slightly easier so you can probably load up a bit more weight on this and then it gets harder at 90 degrees so the idea and what the researchers were showing is that if you get your elbows back up and overhead they didn't go past 90 degrees they only worked to about there but granted that was on the overhead extension so you could go up to there and then push up but again the hardest portion of this is going to be in that contracted position so don't go into a full stretch there a there's no tension lying down and B, you pass that midpoint in range or you pass that stretch position that can be beneficial due to sliding filament theory. So try and get a point to stop at 90 where there's good tension and then coming up and you'll feel your triceps absolutely light up. So this is my favorite variant for triceps and I like to use an easy bar or a V handle. So you loop under it. <laughs> now when the researchers did the study they did not go to full compression like this they actually stopped at 90 degrees with the shoulders at 180 degrees and worked up in the stretch partial and that showed better effects now you could potentially if the weight was able to stay the same and you have the range of movement go from there to just beyond 90 but if you start at 90 and just go up a little bit then there we're going to get the best results according to the current research going beyond it you have no evidence base and therefore I can't recommend it so I would say 90 degrees to a little bit up and you should feel constant tension on the triceps anything past 90 degrees and you're going to be sacrificing weight for stretch and it's not going to be as effective so hamstring curls are another epic way to utilize a stretch partial you can do it seated lying principle stays exactly the same now the stretch in this position is awesome you don't get a massive massive stretch in the lying curl although this one's got a good angle so load up the weight again you're stronger in that stretch position so basically and that's why you don't just hop on a machine so get the stretch make it difficult make sure you've got resistance in the stretch range so there you see as i lie down leg straight the, the there's tension on it so i have to almost like let the knees go so there we are so working in this range you've actually got 
quite a lot of resistance on it and it is fairly easy compared to that full compression range. That full compression range is really difficult. So again, we can then take the weight stack, load it up, set yourself in and work your stretch partials, all with good control, all to a full stretch, full knee lockout and coming back up without the weight stack hitting the bottom so we've got constant tension. Now another really really good way to utilize stretch partials is on the leg extension. Now this one is researched and it's researched quite well. The study is pretty good. The study is showing from about 120 degrees. Now this is not a machine you want to use but I don't have a choice so it's what it is. So you can see I'm probably at about 90 to 95 degrees of knee flexion there which is not great. Ideally, you want a machine where your legs are further back at around 120, which I'd say is probably about there. That is roughly 120, no more than that. So any more than that, sliding filament theory comes in the same with all other stretches and you lose strength. So if you can get your legs right back, well, I mean, this machine just can't, so I've got no option, but you want to work between that 120 to about there, but I'll just work in that 90 degrees to there. Top tier exercise. Right, so if your leg extension looks anything like mine, use the Smith machine or if you've got a leg press on a sled that you can get really deep compression. I've got wedges under my heels, so I'm using a plate just to take my ankles out so I can get more knee compression and still keep a decent spinal position to really dominate the quads. Now for this, I recommend going to full compression, which is about 140, 145 degrees, depending how mobile you are or how big your hamstrings are. And then working up to about halfway and coming back down and utilizing this as your stretch partial range to so get a nice stretch on the quads and to be fair we don't have a stretch on rec fem so the quad that goes past the hip joint that is taken off tension but let's be real people want to grow the teardrop and the lateral quads so if we think about it logically if rectus femoris so the one that goes down the middle from hip, above the hip to below the knee that's going to be out of the equation so therefore the other ones have to work harder right that's just pure logic so we want that teardrop so this should do a really good job at doing that so no guys, you are not wasting your time if you do stretch partials correctly. The easiest way to know if you're doing it right, are you lifting equal weight or even better, are you able to lift more weight in that stretch partial position? If you're lifting more weight or equal weight, then yes, there is great evidence to suggest that you are going to build more muscle and not waste your time. If you find, no matter the exercise, you have to drop your weight in order to achieve the stretch, you're wasting your time. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. If you like the video, please smash that thumbs up button down below and consider hitting subscribe. If not, hopefully you'll watch some of my other content and one of these days I'll earn that subscription from you. Until then, guys, we'll catch you in the next one.